What I have here is some vinegar, and vinegar is a solution of acetic acid in water. And I don't know the concentration of this vinegar. When you buy vinegar from the store, um, they tell you in percentage, but wouldn't it be great if we could figure out what the molar concentration of the acetic acid and vinegar was? In order to do that, what we're going to do is a technique called a titration. We're going to do essentially an acid-base reaction, an acid-base neutralization. So uh, a mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with a mole of acetic acid to form a mole of sodium acetate and a mole of water. And if we could imagine adding exactly the right amount of sodium hydroxide to exactly neutralize the amount of, of acetic acid we had, right? So we could actually count the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, and we'd know how many moles of sodium hydroxide we had added to exactly neutralize the number of moles of acetic acid we had in the container. Okay? If we could do that, then we'd know how many moles of acetic acid we started with. And if we know how, what volume of vinegar we started with, we would then know the concentration of the acetic acid in our vinegar solution. So what's the key? The key is that we have to know how many moles of sodium hydroxide we've added, and we have to know the volume of the vinegar we start with, and we have to know the stoichiometry. We have to know how many moles of, of the sodium hydroxide react with how many moles of the acetic acid, and in this case, it's one to one. And this is called an acid-base titration. So let me show you the process. Um, First, the tool that we're going to use is something called a burette. And this is a burette. It's a straight glass tube that's graduated. It tapers down to a point. Uh, sometimes this point gets clogged, and you can just clear it out with a piece of wire. But that's not too common a problem. Uh, and then there's something called a stopcock. This is a Teflon stopcock. And basically, it's the on-off valve. So when it's open, liquid flows through, the, through this glass tube and into the tip. And when it's closed, it shuts off. And let me show you, take this apart and show you what it looks like. The, the Teflon stopcock comes in four pieces. And one piece is called the barrel. And it has a hole that goes all the way through it. And you'll notice that the handle is lined up with the hole. So right now, the hole is going up and down. And so that's how you can know when it's on and off. This is the on position. And that's the off position. So the barrel goes into the um, burette. And then there's a white Teflon washer that goes on first. And then a black um, rubber O-ring goes on second. And then the knurled nut goes on third and screws on. And you want to get it snug, but not too tight. Okay? And you can play with it a little bit until it's sort of the degree of tightness that you prefer. OK, so we clamp the burette in a burette clamp. So this is a burette clamp. You squeeze these handles here. and. That's what holds the burette in place. There are various types of burette clamps. And what I have here is a funnel at the top, because we're going to have to pour sodium hydroxide into this tube. And we don't want to have to try to pour sodium hydroxide into the little tiny opening here. All right, so let's get the vinegar out of the way. And we're going to take our sodium hydroxide. This sodium hydroxide is of known concentration. And that's important. You have to know the concentration of your sodium hydroxide. You may have to standardize it, which means you may have to measure the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. In this case, we just know ahead of time that the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0.502 molar. Now, obviously, if we know the concentration and we know what volume of sodium hydroxide we add, then we know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide we've added. So the first thing I would suggest is that when you come into the lab, it's a good idea, set up your burette, and then pour a little bit of sodium hydroxide into the burette to rinse it out. Okay, you don't know what other people have been using this burette, where it's been. Okay, so add a little bit, wash down the sides. And when I say a little bit, I you know, mean a few milliliters. And then drain out that uh, sodium hydroxide. And if it doesn't drain out, what you can do is add a little more. And there we go. OK, so we're going to just let all of that run out. And we're just going to discard that. That's nothing. Um, we're not going to keep that at all. So we'll do that. Okay. Now, you'll see that an air bubble developed right here when we let, let it all drain out. And we're going to have to get rid of that air bubble before we start. Let's now fill up the burette for real. And what we do is we add the sodium hydroxide. You don't have to get it all the way up to the zero mark. In other words, you don't have to get it all the way up to the top. <coughs> but you do want to get it close. Um, and all you need to do is be able to measure it exactly. So it doesn't have to be on zero. You just have to be able to read the burette. And I'll explain that in a moment. All right, so we're at something close to zero. It's up at three right now, about approximately. Okay, so it doesn't have to be all the way up to zero. But what you want to do is you want to read off what the value is. First, let's get rid of this bubble, 
And the way you do it is open up the stopcock and let it run really fast, and it'll typically push that bubble right out. And we want to make sure there's nothing stuck on the tip. Okay. And then let's read where we are. To read it, it's a good idea to get a, a white card with a black piece of uh, electrical tape or maybe just some black ink. Hold it behind the meniscus, and it helps you to read the burette. I'm going to turn this towards me a little bit more. And it is at 3.75. Let's call it 7.6. Okay, 3.76. Now, notice that I read that to three significant figures. And the reason why you can do that is that it, the burette is graduated. The numbers indicate milliliters, and then there are other tick marks for tenths of milliliters. And you should be able to extrapolate between any two tick marks to get something reasonably close. And what did I say? 3.76. What did I say? Uh, 3.7. Let's call it 3.73. So 3.73 milliliters. Okay? That's where we're going to start. And now let's begin our titration. What I did was I took a pipette, a volumetric pipette, and I uh, pipetted out 20 milliliters of vinegar. So that's in here. And now we're going to begin our titration. So good idea also, since we're looking for a color change, um, to take a piece of white paper and put it underneath your, your Erlenmeyer flask. Erlenmeyer flasks are good for doing titrations rather than beakers, so it's better not to use a beaker. Better to use an Erlenmeyer flask, and the reason is we'll need to swirl it, and swirling something that's shaped like this is better to make sure that you keep everything in. Now, the end, excuse me, the equivalence point is when we've added exactly the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide as we originally had moles of acetic acid. And you can't see that, right? It just happens. But what we're going to do is we're going to add something that changes color roughly in the pH region where the endpoint occurs. And that compound for titrating weak acids with strong bases is phenolphthalein. And we're going to add just a few drops of phenolphthalein to this solution. Okay. And remember, we're only concerned with, a, with um, the number of moles of acetic acid in here. So we can always rinse down the inside slides of our flask. So we'll do that with distilled water. And now what we're going to do is start our titration. 